For the seesaw lifting mechanism, I mostly just sketched it out on paper and then cut the parts to size and sort of, you know, set them on the floor to see how they fit together. I didn't really do any actual assembly of this part of the prop ahead of time because it, it would have been too big to fit into the car. So I used an equilateral triangle, six foot edges, that gave a, a top point of about five feet from the ground, and I placed the cross beams on top of that on the ground just to figure out how much they would go up and down. I had a full-size cardboard image of the side of the basket, which would allow me to look at some of the spacing and the movement angles. So the cross beams themselves were eight foot two by eights, and so that gave me about four feet from the center point to the end, just a little bit less than four feet. I set the pivot points on the basket and the counterweight rack about three inches in from the end. That left enough wood there to give it enough strength to lift a heavy load. On the basket and the cross beams and the counterweight pivot points, I did not put them in the in the middle of the wood. I offset them in the direction where the strength was needed. So, for example, on the basket, I put the pivot point down lower so that there would be more wood above the pivot point because the pivot point needed to lift the basket. The same was true of the counterweight rack at the other end of the cross beams. Now, in the middle of the cross beams, it was the other way around. The pivot point was closer to the upper edge of the cross beam because being a pivot point, the, the strength was needed below the pivot point, not above it. Now, that's relative to the piece of wood that we're talking about. So, for example, that comment applied to the inner pieces of wood. On the actual cross beam itself, it's the reverse of that because the forces are in the other direction. So, for example, on the ends, the pivot point is near the upper edge of the cross beam, and in the center pivot point, it's towards the lower edge of the cross beam because you would need more material above it to support the upward force. I don't know if this was necessary or not. It just basically makes the effective width of the wood a little bit larger because I wanted to maximize the strength. So with the pieces cut, then I uh, took them to the site and did final assembly and set up there. For the joints on the A-frame, I reinforced those with a small metal plate because I didn't want that coming apart. And so the final structure ended up being pretty solid. That's about all the notes I had on the construction of the A-frame itself. The assembly video has a few more comments in it.